here and excuse me while I take a quick selfie looking all adventurous <laughs> there hope you like it getting likes is the most important thing as you know how else would you know if you're doing what's right oh, oh you do like it well that's great that's so sweet anyway today we're learning about wisdom I know right I like wisdom too Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Wisdom can help you know where to go, what to do, who to be friends with, what to wear, like this super chic leather jacket. Yeah, some love for the jacket. And how about this hat, am I right? <laughs> oh, 
Uh oh, that's no good, huh? Well, this is my favorite hat. Oh well, the phone knows what's best, I suppose. How about this one? Oh, oh good, this one's better. I'm always afraid this hat makes my head look too small. This girl I know, Iris, says I have a small head, but I guess I'll forgive her. Anyway, what? You don't think I should forgive her? Well, what should I do? Get revenge? <laughs> you like revenge? Well, are, are you sure? I, I, I don't think revenge is very wise. I thought you were smart, phone. <sighs> I need to rethink this whole relying on likes thing. And as we'll learn in today's story, there's a whole lot we need to rethink. Oh, be quiet. Back in a minute. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans. Chapter 12, verse 2. If there was ever a man who thought he knew how to think the best thoughts, it was Paul. As a Jewish religious leader, Paul knew all the 613 Jewish laws inside and out. He was convinced he knew the exact right way to live. But then Paul met Jesus in a flash of light and thunder, and everything flipped. Paul's entire way of thinking changed. Jesus is the Son of God. Paul began to travel across the land, starting churches as he shared the amazing news about Jesus. He also wrote long letters, both to the churches that he had started and to ones that he had heard of or wished to visit. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Many of Paul's letters are collected in the New Testament, including a famous letter he wrote to the church in Rome. I long to see you. I want us to encourage one another in the faith we share. In his letter to the Romans, Paul shares the truth about what God has done for us in sending Jesus and how that can change our lives. Romans 12, 2 offers a big challenge. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew all about having a mind makeover, but changing your thoughts isn't easy. Whatever you do, don't think about an elephant. Do not think about an elephant. You're thinking about an elephant. It's really hard to control your thoughts. When Paul says, don't live the way this world lives, he's saying, don't let this world push you into thinking and saying and doing things. Imagine that you're modeling clay. Modeling clay can be turned into all sorts of cool stuff, like this, or this, or even this. The problem is, no matter how much you shove it around and shape it, modeling clay doesn't form anything that lasts. And we all know how modeling clay ends up. Mixed up, dried up bits. We can get squashed too when we let the world around us tell us how to act, what to say, what to wear, what to play. We run from one thing to the next without stopping to think about what really matters. That's why Paul reminds us next, let your way of thinking be completely changed. We all know it's really hard to change your thoughts just by trying hard. Yeah, there's only one way to make lasting change, and that's to let God work in your thoughts as well as in your heart. Imagine this is your brain, and throughout the day, it begins to boil with a gazillion thoughts. Oh, why do I have to get up now? I hate school. I can't believe I have Miss Wells this year. She's the most boring teacher ever. Everyone else has a better lunch than I do. I can't run a whole mile in PE. It's not fair I have to finish my homework before I can play my game. 
You can make all those thoughts change in an instant, but you can invite God to begin to change those thoughts for you. And as you spend more time focused on God's words written down in the Bible and spend time with others who follow God, your thoughts will begin to shift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Over time, new thoughts will replace the old anxious ones. God will begin to change you from the inside out. Now, you're no longer modeling clay. Instead of being pushed around from the outside, you have a brand new way of thinking. Paul writes, Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. When something difficult happens, you can stand strong and ask God to show you what to do and what to say. And the more you invite God to change what's happening in your head, the more you grow day by day in wisdom. Today's wisdom comes from the Apostle Paul. I think I'll turn you off for a while. You're a smartphone, not a wise phone. The Apostle Paul wrote, don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. A lot of people in the world do things just because everyone else is doing it. But Paul wrote that we shouldn't live the same way as the world. We should think differently. We should stand out even. When Jesus was here, he showed us a different way to live. A way where we don't just like, but love everybody, even our enemies. People were drawn to him because he was so different. And when we believe Jesus is who he says he is, that he died for us and came back to life in three days, the Holy Spirit will help us to change from the inside out. So, if I'm being wise, I'm not making choices based on what the world wants. It shouldn't even be about what I want. I should make choices based on what God wants. And God wants me to love him and love others. But listen, completely changing your way of thinking takes time. It's something you and God will be working on your whole life. So here's the one thing to remember today. Never stop growing in wisdom. Wisdom is a treasure you'll always be hunting for. And while you're hunting, ha ha ha, you'll need a cool hat. It's my favorite. I'll see you around. Bye. What are you doing out here, John? Oh, I just wanted to show you how green my thumb is. Oh, it's not green. It's just an expression. No, I'm trying to grow a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not how those are supposed to work. <laughs> just water it a little bit and then wait. Wait for what? There's no way that this is going to go. Oh! oh! Well, don't just stand there, Brandon. Help me catch it. How? But, but you just Brandon! Oh no! They bite! Ah! They bite!
I'm John. I'm Brandon. And welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. And we have a show we know you're going to dig. Ha. Yep, you might say this show is groundbreaking. <laughs> Unless it gets too deep. What do you call a man with a shovel? Uh, what? Doug. <laughs> what do you call a man without a shovel? What? Douglas. Uh, okay, I think we're done. Okay. Well, not until we get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I think we're as low as we can possibly go. Moving, Moving on. on. Today is a very special day. The one that has been long talked about and patiently waited on Actually, for Actually, no, no, one, no one knew anything about this. One that no one knew about, yet will go down in history. That's right. Several months ago, John and I buried a time capsule. Yeah, and in case you're like me, time capsules. Capsules? Capsule. Those things are not places where you keep clocks. Nope, it's a container where you put objects of the present time. Uh -huh. Could be anything, comic books, movies. Can of SpaghettiOs. Anything. Uh -huh. Then you bury it and dig it up in the future so you can see how much has changed during the time it was buried. So we decided to preserve some of the moments we've had here on the So-and-So Show. And yeah, that way we can see if we've learned anything since they happened. Yeah, and that will help us make wiser choices in the future. Exactly, so without further delay, it is time to open the, the time, time capsule. capsule. Whoa. <laughs> all right, let's see how this thing held up. Sorry about it. Uh, that's all right. Woo. All right. Here we go. And, oh, oh, hey, look at that, a VHS tape. Can you believe we used to watch movies on these things? Why did we preserve our moments on VHS? We didn't bury the time capsule that long ago. I don't know why we preserved it, but let's watch it. Is there a problem with the way I'm speaking today? I know you speak properly. <laughs> Here we go. All right, and we will. I don't know how, I'm not sure this fits into the. Amateur. <laughs> what is that? Ancient technology I borrowed from the museum. Moment number one. Food fight during the credits. Ah! No, oh yes, yes. Oh, this is who? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, the Salisbury thing is disgusting! Ah! Ah! Oh. Uh, I remember that very well. What wisdom did you gain from that, John? Uh, I learned that it's unwise to have a food fight in a box with someone whose arms are longer than yours, even even from here. Oh, wow. Yeah, see? <laughs> see? I learned that mashed potatoes, though tasty, are not good for your complexion. Oh, ah, good to know. Yeah. All right, moment number two. It's over here. Over oh. here. There you go. Grab a handful. Woo! Let's do two, just for good luck. Okay. Wow, that's amazing! The plastic building bricks completely disappeared! Are you, no, are you serious? They're clearly right there. Shh! I'm concentrating! Let's have slosh! Ah! Oh, John loses! Oh! Oh! And that's all the time we have for... <laughs> Any wisdom there? Yeah, I think maybe I'll wear shoes next time I play hop slosh. Better traction. Yeah, very true. Moment number three. Oh, cookies. Oh, and milk. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mm. 
so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, go, go. Next time, you should pour the milk into the glass before you eat the cookies. Hmm. I'm not sure I learned anything. Yeah. Got milk? Don't mind if I do. You know what else is wise? <laughs> what? It's Bible story time with Kellen. 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 <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, we were just learning from our past. Oh, that's cool. Actually, we have a moment for you. You do? Yeah, Kellen moment. Do you guys need anything else? Uh... Nope. We don't need anything else, Kellen. Good. You could have warned me. Yeah. Bye, Kellen. All right, I'll uh, see you guys next time. Did you gain any wisdom from that moment, Kellen? Yep. Slime takes a long time to get out of your hair, so I do not recommend getting it in there. Very wise. Hey, do you have something for us? I do, and it has nothing to do with slime. Perfect. Take it away, Kellen. Today's story is actually a verse from the book of Romans, which was a letter Paul wrote several years after Jesus died and rose again. This is how the verse starts. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. What Paul wrote was so different than anything people were used to back then. So, to help me tell things a little different, I've got my cheer squad with me. Take it away, girls. Yo, yo, Jackie. What up, Dee Dee? Are you ready to lay down some wisdom? Girl, let's do this. Do not live the way the world lives. No, let the way you think completely change you. Do not live the way the world lives. Change the way you think right now. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. The world might be telling you to only look out for yourself. But when Jesus was here, he said we should love others. That's an entirely different way to think. Paul wrote that when you think that way, then you will be able to test what God wants for you. And you will agree that what he wants is right. I think we should hear how the cheer squad breaks that down. Do you like tests? Oh, I destroy tests. Kick it. <laughs> Once you change the way you think, you and God will be in sync. Then you can listen, study, and test to know God's will is the best. If we let our way of thinking be completely changed, we can see for ourselves that what God wants for us is best. Because after all, his plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Let's hear one more from the squad. You know what I was thinking, Jackie? What were you thinking, Dee Dee? Oh, that I'm ready to wrap this thing up. Oh, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> ready, set, face. H-I-S. His plan is good. It's pleasing and it's perfect, that is understood. H-I-S, his plan is good. So follow God at home and in your neighborhood. Your thinking must change so that you can test. H-I-S, his plan is the best. Woo! Let's give it up for the cheer squad. Paul was pretty clear. We need to let our way of thinking be changed. Now, this won't happen overnight. This is a lifelong commitment to let God lead us into his way of thinking. When we do that, 
We'll learn what's best and we'll make wiser decisions. Like eating only five slices of pizza instead of nine. <laughs> I would say that's wise. Or deciding not to stay up all night playing video games. Hmm. Very wise. Or maybe just listening to what your parents or teachers are asking the first time they say it instead of the seventh. That would make a big difference, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. I'll see you guys next time. We'll do. Sure thing. How long do you think it took uh, him to get all the slime out of his hair? I don't know, an hour? I was going to say three. Two days. Two, Two days? days? Two days. Huh. Now it's time to reveal, reveal the, the question. question. How are you wiser than you used to be? I think I'm wiser than I was 20 minutes ago because, A, now I know how to play a VHS tape. And two, I learned some new cheers. H-I-S, his plan is good. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm wiser because I used to think doing a cartwheel down the stairs was safe until I landed on my face. Really? What grade were you in? It was last week. Moving on. <sighs> okay. Talk about it together. How are you wiser than you used to be? And we'll see you next time. We'll be making some new moments for the next time capsule, and I am sure we'll be oh so wise. Yes, and probably a little silly too. Oh, Cap definitely. <laughs> That's the so and so show, everybody. Bye. Capsule. That's right. Capsule. That's how it's spelled. Capsule. Capsule. Where zig 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 zig. Who's chasing who? I'm chasing that guy. All right. He tastes better. Chasing you. Unicorn, come out to play. Whoa. Oh, I juked the unicorn. <laughs>